Hi, my name is Harper Cody, and today I'm going to be reading and reviewing It Feels Like Snow by Nancy Cody. Alice swept the last leaves of fall into her sleeping garden. She put down her broom and rubbed her shoulders. She looked at the sky. A shiver ran through her bones. And then it happened. Her big toe began to throb. Snow, she told her dog, sweetie. This means snow. Now, Alice could always tell if it was about to snow when her toe started throbbing. So she headed to the hardware store to buy a sturdy snow shovel. On her way, she met her neighbors, Etta and Greta Grillo. There's snow coming. I can feel it in my toe, she cautioned them. The sisters looked at one another and raised their eyebrows. Maybe your shoes are too tight, they said, giggling. Well, I'll be prepared, snapped Alice, and away she hobbled, toe throbbing, sure that snow was on the way. Before the sun set, the first few sno snowflakes were falling. That night, it snowed ankle deep. The next morning, after Alice shoveled her walk, she watched Etta and Greta slip and slide all the way to the hardware store in, the, in their heavy galoshes. By the time they bought, they bought their snow shovel and returned home, they looked tired. Alice thought their toes must be freezing. The following week was... The following week, on her way to mail a letter, Alice met up with Mr. Bean walking his dog, Bailey. His dog, Bailey. Suddenly, a shiver ran through her bones, and then it happened. The tip of her nose began to tingle. Now Alice could always tell it was about to snow when her nose tingled. Snow's on the way, she warned Mr. Bean. Don't you have anything to do but worry, he scolded. I can feel it in my nose, she insisted, but Mr. Bean paid no attention. Alice quickly returned home, chopping some firewood and bought it inside. Before she finished stacking the wood beside the, snow, beside the stove, snow began to fall. That night, it snowed knee-deep. The next day, by a, cozy, by a cozy fire, Alice watched Mr. Bean attempt to chop frozen firewood as Bailey searched for the bones he had buried. Two weeks passed and Alice was relieved to feel no throbbing or tingling. She put on her favorite hat for she was meeting her friend Mildred for lunch. When she opened the door, a gust of wind blew in. A familiar shiver ran through her bones and then it happened. Her elbow started clicking. Oh my, a big snow. I must call Mildred and cancel our luncheon. She telephoned her friend. We can't go. There's a big sto snowstorm coming, she squealed. I can feel it in my bones. Mildred laughed. Mildred laughed. Don't be a silly old woman. But Alice didn't feel like a silly old woman. By the way, by, by the way her arm was clicking, she knew a storm was close. So while Mildred was out dining, Alice, who was tired, who was tired of being laughed at, tired of being ignored, and not too happy about being called a silly old woman, put her shovel, by, put her shovel by the door, chopped plenty of firewood, put her, put her shovel by the door, and made her way to the grocery store. Before she fell asleep, snow was falling. That night, the snow fell and fell and fell. By morning, it was waist high. Alice sat by her window, prepared to enjoy a relaxing day, but instead, she began to worry. She worried about Etta and Greta, Mr. Bean and Bailey, and of course, Mildred. They hadn't prepared for the snow. Alice started a roaring fire on the wood stove, made a pot of bubbling soup, and cleared her snowy walk. Whatever I have, I will share, she decided, and in no time she was on the phone inviting her neighbors to join her. Then the grateful group
willow sisters cleared themselves a path and then trudged right over. They bought Alice a pair of soft, fuzzy stockings. These were worn those throbbing toes, they told her. Carrying Bailey in his arms, Mr. Bean bought Alice a woolly scarf he had, kn in, he had knitted himself. This will keep that nose of yours well protected, he murmured. Forgive us for behaving so badly, begged Mildred as she handed Alice a bottle of bubbly bath. Just a thing for aching bones, she babbled. All the little animals. <laughs> Together they warmed their bones by the wood stove, filled their bellies with good food, and laughed and talked for hours. Look at that big feast. Finally, after such a busy day, Alice complained, My head's beginning to ache. Does this mean snow? Everyone cried as a shiver ran through their bones. Alice laughed. It means that it's time for everyone to go home. Right again, they all agreed, and they thanked Alice and said goodbye. From that night on, Alice felt bone-tingling happy, for no one ever again thought of her as a silly old woman with nothing to do but worry. So, Hopper, what did you think of that book? I really like this book because it showed me a lot about prepare, preparation and how you prepare for things. That is true. Could you tell me um, what some of the clues were as far as um, when Mildred was about, not Mildred, <laughs> Alice, when Alice was about to feel snow coming, what were some of the, the little clues? Well, some of the clues were, well, the first clue was her toe throbbing, the second mm -hmm. clue was her nose tingling, and the last was her elbows clicking. Right. Uh, you know, you, you picked out a great picture there because that is one of my favorite pictures because it shows how no none of the adults would listen to Alice, but who were the ones that always listened to Alice? The animals, all from the start. Yeah. So. One by one. One by one. So first, it all the animals start following her because they're the only ones that believe her. Mm-hmm. And all around they keep following her. And then in the very last page we see them all enjoying a wonderful night's sleep in her cozy little house. That's my, that's one of my favorite pictures. But my actual favorite picture would be the back in the front. Do you know why? Why is that, Hopper? Because they would both they are one connected picture. Mm. So it shows her house and she's walking on the little path. This would be the sister's house. Um, and Mr. Um, Mr. Bean's house. Mr. Bean's house, yeah. So it's kind of like a little village and you can see where they all live. So that is a fun place. And doesn't it make you want to live in that place? Yeah, I also <laughs> like the little garden right here with yeah. the little cardinal. It's really pretty. Yeah, and it's funny because here we are reading a story about um, snow and we are in August right now. Summer. Yeah, we're in summertime. But here the we story. are in August, and when does fall begin? It starts in September, and the story takes place in fall. That's right. Like so at the end of fall. So even though this story feels like it's so far from now, it really isn't. Because here we are in August, and September is right around the corner, mm -hmm. so we'll be entering in on that. So I hope that you're prepared this winter in everything that you do, and that you enjoy uh, a wonderful school season. And I hope your I hope the readers all enjoyed this story this week. Yep, I hope you all enjoyed the story this week, and thank you for all watching this. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.